um, in the chamber again today uh, for a, another important issue and um, thank you for accepting the stalking bill that was uh, brought through the, the House uh, at uh, the last session. Um, Mr. This country is no country for women and it really is shameful and I find it hard for me to have these contradictions in my head and in my heart and I love this country, I'm so proud to be Irish, so proud to be living in a modern European democracy, happy to be bringing my children up in, in this country but on the other hand I have an overwhelming sense of being let down continuously, constantly over and over again and by and made angry by this absolute state of things and we have let down our daughters we've let down our friends our, our sisters and our mothers and our, our constitution puts us at home our country and our society put unmarried pregnant women into institutions our church has isolated and persecuted women shamed them and even said we were unclean after having children our schools still don't educate us or empower us to do what is right or wrong when it comes to sex and consent. Our healthcare system doesn't adequately listen to the needs of women. An awful lot of the stuff that, that happens in women are blamed on our, on our, on our head, not on our, on our body. And I just told it, that's your lot. Our justice system is broken and we do not, do not look after our victims. You spoke earlier very passionately about looking after and listening to the victims, but I hope you will listen to the victims when it, com when it comes to reforming how sexual assaults are dealt with. Our guardian need training. They need to be there for the girl and the woman to protect, protect them and their dignity, not to shame them and not to make them feel like it's their fault. And we must really grow up as a country. The death of Ashton Murphy, and again, I pass on my deepest condolences to her family, has seen a right amount of anger. And I hope that people now are listening, men, the state, the government departments are now listening to that anger. But let's remember all those women who have been murdered in Ireland and all across the world, because we're standing here for them. But we're also standing here for the woman who is afraid of her life right now who is afraid to walk down the street, who is afraid to go home tonight, who is afraid that he's just going to blow tonight and he's going to hurt her even more than usual. And we can't let down another woman, like a young woman who wrote to me today, and I'm going to read out her own. These are her words. As a young woman, gender violence is a very important aspect of my life. When I was 20, I was sexually assaulted and raped. The DPP decided there was not enough evidence to press charges and the persecutor, as the persecutor, as it would be my word against his. They also believed that because I was on a date with the person, it wouldn't be looked upon as favourably as a victim. No support was give, given to this young girl and she was let, let to go um, through it all by herself. You have to own your own but use your own finances to seek therapy and created shame and victims around that, um, uh, shame around that abuse too. It's really embarrassing that that's, and that's recent. It's a young girl, it's still, still young. A really embarrassing and a really sad indictment that it's current system that we, op we are now operating. And we will not change until we act on that soundbite, that really lovely soundbite that you said, zero tolerance. And that zero tolerance needs to be listened to. Put the laws in place, and if those laws aren't bringing convictions, then they're not working. If the system does not make bringing complaints accessible and make it a safe place to report crime, then this, the system and the, that, needs to, that is not working and needs to change. And I think it's a really small thing to ask, ask for us to be feel safe and to be safe. And it's a really small thing to ask for perpetrators of violence to be punished for that violence. And you would think it's a small ask, but it's the biggest ask of our time. It's the biggest ask of this government. And if I, like, I don't want young girls accepting the casual sexual assaults that I accepted as a young woman. Sexually assaulted and made to walk off laughing because if you didn't laugh then you were no crack and you were abused for even more. And the government on one hand taking, talking this up and saying we well, know we're going to have a zero tolerance. But yet, when we have, we're, we're faced with it head on this week with the women of honour, who are women of honour, we're let down by the system and told that the system must go into, for, into place. And again, ignore the victims, go with the system. It seems to be always the system. And Minister, this has to change. And I want safe streets. I want my sons to be reared in a country that doesn't accept based 
ignorance and sexual violence as a as a day-to-day -day thing and I don't want my 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 nieces and my my friends and my friends daughters growing up and um, looking behind them and I curse the country that makes me look behind myself constantly when I go out go out alone I curse the people who has done this to me and all the women in this room and all the young girls that we have to that we have to face head on now and it's only it's up to us to change Girl, my gosh.